Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth, and welcome to episode four of our video podcast series on Avid Tips and Techniques. The audio mixer is found in the tools menu. It's also the default tool that opens when you choose the audio editing tool set. Now we covered tool sets in a lot of detail in the previous episode, so if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you download it and check it out. Now a lot of the audio mixer is actually covered in the MC101 Editing with Avid Media Composer course, but today I want to show you some of the extras. So moving to the hamburger menu or the fast menu, there are several options here that we do cover in the 101 course, but there's some variations that are really worth looking at. The set level on track global means that the gain possessed by the current segment, that's the one that I'm parked in right now, will be inherited by all the other segments on the track. But watch what happens when I place an in mark in the sequence. So I'll mark an in point right there. Now, when I go back to that fast menu, it says set level on track from in. What that means is that all the clips in that track from the in mark to the end of the sequence will inherit that gain value. Now if I remove that in mark and place an out mark in my sequence, that menu will then change to set level on track to out. That means that every segment from the beginning of the sequence up to and including the segment with the out mark in it will then inherit the gain value. Now if I place an in point and an out point in my sequence, that menu of course will then change to set level on track in to out. This means that all clips in that track between the marks will inherit the gain value that you're about to apply. Okay, notice that the marks do not have to be at cut points. If the system sees that at least part of the segment is between the marks, then the whole segment will be affected. Now, adjust pan volumes on track is actually another very useful option. Say the mix between individual segments is fine, but overall it's a little loud. Rather than raising the gain of each segment by a certain level, you can deal with each segment on the selected tracks simultaneously. This is very fast and allows you to quickly preview your changes and make further changes equally quickly. Now bear in mind that this option does not set the gain, but adjusts the existing gain. So if your segment had a gain value of say minus 15 dB, and you applied an adjustment of plus 6, then the final gain value will be minus 9. In the same way, if your segment had a gain value of say plus 3 and you applied an adjustment of say minus 5, then your final gain value for that segment will be minus 2 dB. So to do this you need to park inside one of the segments and choose the adjust pan volumes on track global. The word global is shown if no in or out marks are in the sequence. Of course, if you have an in and or an out mark, then the effect will be limited to the clips affected by those marks. So I select that and in the dialog box I will type the amount of boost using positive values or cut using negative values up to a maximum of 6 dB either way. Every segment on the selected tracks will be adjusted by that amount. Now I can also adjust the panning for every segment. Now adjusting panning is the same principle, but there's something you have to understand first about panning's numerical values. You probably already know that the pan position can be adjusted by dragging the pan slider, but panning can also be adjusted numerically. By default, odd number channels are panned 100% left or L100. This is equivalent to a numeric pan value of minus 100. If I click on that field and say type minus 50, like this, the pan will change to L50 or 50% left. If I type 0, then the clip will centre pan. A value of 50 or positive 50 will result in the pan changing to R50 or right 50%. A value of plus 100 will result in the pan being set to 100% right. Therefore, there is a total range of available values of 200, from minus 100, which is 100% left, to positive 100, which is 100% right. Now that we've seen how the numerical values work for panning, let's see how entering certain values in the Adjust Pan Volumes dialog box affects the panning. 
If the pan is set to 100% right, a value adjustment entered in the Adjust Pan Volume dialog box of minus 150 will result in the pan being set to left 50. So let me just do that. So I've got my track here set to 100% right. I now go to my Adjust Pan Volumes on Track Global and I want to adjust the panning by minus 150. So this results in the pan being set to L50. If it's set to L50, then an adjustment of plus 75 will result in the panning being set to R25 and so on. Now remember, this option adjusts gain and pan by a numerical offset. It does not set absolute values. The last three options in this menu allow us to remove clip gain or clip pan separately or remove the pan and gain at the same time. Now adjusting gain can be just as simple as dragging the little sliders in the audio mixer like this. But there are actually four other ways you can use to adjust the gain sliders values. If you select a slider to make it active, you can firstly just type in a number with a numeric keypad and set the gain to within a tenth of a decibel. So typing plus 4.7 will assign that exact value to the clip's gain. Typing minus 7.2 will then apply 7.2 dB of cut to that segment. You can also click the numbers which run down the left hand side of the slider area to assign those values. Nice and easy. But for fine adjustment, you can also use the up and down arrow keys to increase and decrease the gain by 0.1 dB increments. The left and right arrow keys will also work the same way. But if you use shift up arrow or shift down arrow, the changes will be in whole decibel increments. So if the gain was set to minus 4 dB, then up arrow will change it to minus 3.9. But using shift up arrow would change it to minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and so on. And you know how useful the tab key is in getting you from one place to another? Well it's just as useful here in the audio mixer. If you have a gain slider active in the audio mixer, then the tab key will jump to the track's pan adjustment. Shift tab will jump back to the gain adjustment. If you jump to the pan adjustment and then hit the tab key again, it will highlight the gain adjustment of the next track and so on. And of course shift tab will do the same thing in reverse. This means you can easily adjust gain or pan for the sequence without ever having to use the mouse. Hang on a minute. Did I really just say that you could adjust audio gain and pan for the whole sequence without using the mouse? Well, yes I did. Let me show you how. In my keyboard map, I've mapped the audio mixer to the F5 key and the timeline window to the F6 key. If I now park on a segment of audio I want to adjust, I hit the F5 key to activate the audio mixer. Use the tab key to go to the item that I want to adjust. In this case, it's gain. I want to set that to, say, plus 8. I then use the F6 key to go back to the timeline and use fast forward, which I've got mapped to shift S on my keyboard, to go to the next edit. F5 will then take me back to the audio mixer. I use the tab key again to go to the relevant gain or pan adjustment and so on. Don't forget we offer a wide range of AVID certified training courses either at your facility or at our AVID authorised education centre in French's Forest. Make sure you check out our website for course details and schedules. Well I hope you've enjoyed our tour through some of the more interesting aspects of the audio mixer. Now, there's lots of other audio tools to explore and we'll look at some of those in future episodes. But until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.